Okay, everybody, I am back. I flooded my canvas with my uh, Flow Acrylic Artist Loft with paint and Floetrol, or water and Floetrol. So it's paint, Floetrol, water. And I've done that. I just need to torch the bubbles. And then we will get to fill in our cup. So, the fun thing about a cup pour is it doesn't matter how many times you do or fill the cup with the same colors, it's never gonna turn out the same. So I like to just choose a bunch of colors, put them in the cup, pour them out, and find out what happens. So again, I'm using this, uh, I think it's a nine ounce cup. That's mm, eh, 16 ounce. So we're gonna use this cup, and I've decided that I am going to use blues. I love blues. I've been doing other colors lately, so I've decided that I'm going to do a blue cup pour. So I'm going to try to put the cup right here where you guys can see it. And then what you do is you just start adding your layers of paint to the cup. So I'm going to start out with Master's Touch Sky Blue. And actually I'm going to hold the cup. So I'm going to put some in the bottom of this cup. off. Okay, the next one I'm going to use is Extreme Sheen Ice Blue. Okay, so I'll make a layer in the cup. Okay. There's no good angle to show you what's in the cup, really. Especially when I'm trying to get these lids off. There we go. Come on. Oh, they're so tight. Okay, so then the next layer just going to drizzle it down the side on top of the other blue, like so. All right. Next, I am going to add a, a silver and a gold. So I'm going to add the gold now and then the silver later on. Now, one thing I need to tell you is to keep in mind when you're filling your cup, that whatever you pour in first will be your top color or your last color coming out. So keep that in mind when you're filling your cup. If you want the lighter colors on the top, you need to put them in first. Okay, all right, so now I'm doing um, Payne's Gray. I haven't used this in a while and I really like this color. So we're gonna put some Payne's Gray on top of the gold, which looks beautiful when it's together. Like so. And who knows, this may come out to be just a big blue blob of nothing, but we'll see. All right, next color that I'm using here, kind of a nice medium blue, and it is Cerulean Blue by Liquitex Basics. Payne's Gray was um, folk, uh, folk art, because that's Payne's Gray was so popular it was really hard to find for the longest time. Then the next one I'm going to do, another favorite, is Prussian Blue. So what I'm kind of doing is, is I'm putting my lightest colors in the bottom, then my darkest colors, and then my medium colors will be um, what I actually pour out first. So let's see if you can see that. So they kind of stay layered in the cup, um, but some of the heavier colors will go to the bottom. And so this next color, which just got all over me, which tells me it needs to be shook up, is um, the Extreme Sheen Sapphire. So I'm using a lot of non-metallics and sapphire, or um, Extreme Sheens, and then a few Extreme Sheens this time. So this is another kind of medium-ish blue. It's really pretty. Brandy. So now we've got some really nice layers going in. Next, I was going to put the silver in, but I think what I'm going to do instead is I am going to put the lake, lake blue in first um, to get some a little more contrast in the blues before the silver goes on. And I think this lake blue will look really pretty next to the silver. So. Yes, this is a lot of paint, but in a cup pour, 
we're going to be pouring a lot of it off as we tilt. Okay, so that was the... Boy, I'm having trouble with these paints tonight, aren't I? Lake blue. My hands are all blue. So now I'm going to put in my silver. And this silver, I used an old Craftsmart bottle, but this silver is um, some of my old... Um, Which silvers they are, sorry, but um, I just had I have these bottles and I, I keep them to pour paint in, so I have lots of different paints in old bottles, ketchup bottles. And for the longest time, I was only using mustard bottle for my white paint, but I finally got some new bottles. Okay, this one had the blob in, so there's the silver. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. I got this big glob in this in the silver, so I'm gonna take it out. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so next is the um, deep sapphire. No, I'm gonna use phalo blue next. I'm gonna use my phalo blue on top of the silver. That'll give me two hues of blues between the silver layer above and below it. Okay. And the cup is getting full, so we know we've got more than enough, but I still have a couple more blues. Like I said, a lot of these blues will just mix together and make probably one of the other colors, but um, since I had them mixed up, I'm going to try it. So this blue, again, is the, this is Cobalt Blue Hue from Liquortex Basics. And then my last color is going to be the Extreme Sheen Deep Sass Sapphire. And then I might add one more just to fill the cup a little more. Because this is really dark. Yeah. Okay, so I've got the Deep Sapphire in there, so now we're almost full. You can see the, see the layers in the cup. Okay. So now I am going to put in some of my favorite color, one of my favorite colors. Um, I'm going to, actually I'm going to use the blue bonnet. I am going to use the Apple Barrel, so it's the Walmart brand of um, acrylic paint. It's called Blue Bonnet. And I just really like this color. So, and since it's going to end up pouring out first, it's going to kind of, <gasps> kind of be a wasted paint. So it doesn't really matter. Oh my goodness! I am just spilling all over, aren't I? Alright, hang on a second. Alright, so I made a mess, which really isn't going to make a difference because we're pouring this anyway. Another good thing. But I got some blue paint here. And so I'm just going to absorb a little bit of it and then move on because, again, we're pouring this. Okay. So. not or does not cause an issue when we start tilting this around okay so we have our cup it's got all our colors in it and they're mixing up and making a mess so now what we're gonna do is I'm going to um, I'm gonna pop the bubbles again just because I had to add that pop the bubbles okay and then we're gonna pour. And there's no real rhyme or reason to how you want to pour this. Um, because once you start tilting, whatever you thought you had in mind is probably going to disappear and come up with something else. So here we go. Um, so I think, I mean, this blue is already here. It's gonna get poured on. So I think I'm gonna start at this corner. I'm gonna go kind of up that way or actually, I'm just gonna pour it in the middle. All right, on this one, I'm just gonna pour it in the middle. So here's what we do. Um, Just keep going. Make it go, 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 go. 
disappearing too much. So I'm just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. Now I'm moving it toward the corner because I know that I'm going to be tilting that way. But I need to keep the, the color going. Oops. Okay, so now I'm just going to use up the rest. Most of your pores are wasting, you're wasting some paint. There's no, there's no helping that. Okay, now before, because I know this is going to be messy, before I um, start tilting this, I'm just going to move my paints out of the way. I do have puppy pads down for absorbing the extra paint, but I have a lot of bottles of paint sitting here, so I'm just going to move them out of the way so that I have room to tilt this because it's going to get messy. So as you can see, it's already going off the side, but I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to tilt it. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to disperse the paint in such a way that I keep the layers, but I also develop design. So because I have so much of the lighter blue, I'm going to go back here to the center. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is stretch the paint out so that the layers that I do have get stretched out and start to create something beautiful. So I'm going to go up this side. And as you can see, we kept track of the gold layers. Why it's so important to have extra paint over here is so that this flows and doesn't get stuck. If it gets stuck, then we'll have to add some more of the white paint over here. But it looks like it's flowing quite nicely. So I'm going to let it go up this corner now. And really stretch it off that corner. Because we want our edges covered too. And then like what's going on here so I don't like what's going on down there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get that to stretch out a little bit and give me oh no I don't want to lose that so we're going to go back this way so you have to kind of watch the design and be careful of how and you know how far you're stretching it so that you don't end up losing the, the parts that you like but that you dump off the parts you don't okay so now I've got the beautiful lines that I like. I just want to get it back down to this corner and pour that off like so. And then I'm going to bring this back to center because I need to get the blue, the light blue back where I wanted it. There. Okay. So So that we're level again. Oh, I got so much paint down here, it's not very level. Okay, so let me get cleaned up here. And this is why I like pour painting. Um, I know you can't see it, but one of the things is um, sometimes in pour paintings, just like I showed you on the wall behind me, um, you can actually see something in there. Um, that you want to accentuate with additional paint. In this type of situation, my thought is right now, just looking at this painting, my thought is going to the bottom of the ocean. It's going to the plates in the ocean. It's going to the river, or, you know, the valleys in the ocean. And what I'm thinking is, is that's what it looks like to me. It looks like the bottom of the ocean. If I wanted to make this um, for a children's room, I would actually add um, a shark. I would add fish. I would add plant life. Um, but this is a pour, and it is absolutely gorgeous the way it is. Um, when you see it, you're, when I bring you down, you're going to see what I'm talking about as far as that it looks like the bottom of the ocean. Um, so, and one good thing about pours, other than having to scrape up some paint like this 
and put it on the corners if they're still showing canvas through. Easy and done. This one's fine. Um, can't really see that one. That one looks like it needs a little help. So we're just gonna give it a little help like that. And this one needs some help too, I see. So we'll pick up the paint and put it on there because it's gonna drip down and it's gonna fill it in. And with this type of design, it's going to match. Um, so as long as you have have tilted it so that, that the whole canvas is covered, the edges are covered, you'll, you're fine. Now, with every painting, take your popsicle stick, your skewer, your finger, it doesn't matter, and scrape the underneath. As this paint dries, you are going to have um, drips that are going to be underneath the canvas. Okay, so and I found another bare spot. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are covering those drips, uh, or not covering those drips, we are stopping those drips from happening. So by scraping the bottom of this, you're scraping off what's falling off and eventually it will stop. So 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever time you've got, set a timer, just come back, scrape the bottom edge, okay? Because you get some really nice paint off of there too. Um, if you were doing uh, paint jewelry or skins or something, um, you would probably be using a plastic sheet under here, not puppy pads, and you would be picking up all these um, drips and putting them into jewelry. And I make jewelry, but I don't make um, this acrylic jewelry. I make uh, metal jewelry. So these would not do me any good. Now for some reason, I think I lost my balance on this one because it is no longer sitting flat. So I'm going to find something else to prop it up. And it could be I have so much paint on here, it's just tilting the canvas. But um, I am going to go ahead and um, put you on pause for a minute, and um, then I'll bring you down and show you the painting. It's beautiful. Okay, so here is the painting. And do you see what I was talking about? How when you're looking at it like this, it looks like um, it's under the sea. Like here is the um, lowest part, and then you've got the edges of the sea shelves and then it works its way up. So I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna bring you down close so that you can see everything that's going on right now. So we've got all the different colors of blues and you can see the lines in between. Those are the different colors that are coming out. Then we've got some cells that look like foam. And then we've got the gold, which is lining, the gold and the silver are lining the edges as if it was the shelves in the ocean. And we've got some little bubbles, because we know that there's bubbles that float up from different plants and things. And then we go over here, this is along the top, and here is the center. And you can see just all the things that are happening here. Some of these really neat bubbly things here. I'm going to leave a lot of the bubbles in because I'm hoping they actually develop more because um, it breaks up what I'm calling the ocean shelf and it looks so pretty. I, I, I picture a shark swimming along here and you know other sea life floating, floating along or trying to get away from the shark but um, unless it's for a children's room I am not a um, painter that can actually paint fish and things like that. Um, I do on children's things because I know they don't have to be as realistic. So here we go. So this is tonight's painting. This was a poor painting. And I'll try to get the whole thing in for you. Um, this one I think will look really nice if it was resined, but again, we'll have to wait and see what I decide to coat 
this one with anything glossy would work because it reminds me again of the sea and it looks like a map of the bottom of the sea so I'm going to um, let this dry I'll show you the dried results in my next video and then um, it, it'll go on my website and all of that information will be at the end of this video so appreciate you watching thank you please like and subscribe and um, can't wait to uh, get you another video. Okay, bye.